of ultra-modern travel, bullet trains and space shuttles to the outer reaches of the atmosphere, but where the preference of the young elite is to glide and fly atop rather simplistic planks of wooden fiberglass mounted on four plastic wheels, a symbolic act of animal defiance in an overly complex age, or merely an instinctual adaptation to a new world in which paradise can be a parking lot. Your perusal, a man with a curious reptilian name, consumed by a sport, and with a natural penchant for the comedic. If somebody came up to me and said, grow up and get a real job, you know what I'd tell them? Get back on your ice cream bicycle, jerk, and sell on the other street. Although he may occasionally be full of crock, this is actually one hard-working gator.
About three more breaths, then I'll drop in. You ready? I wonder what I'll do. This is a backside air. Mute air. Tom Grohulski to tail. Inver Fakie on the extension. 360 rock and roll. Sean Penn. That's a one-footed Madonna, incidentally. Uh, mute Fakie. This is good, buddy. And I know I like these. That was a backside disaster. Burned up the extension. And a 540. Front side air double-handed. Eggplant on the extension. I love doing these. They're rock and roll fakies. And a Madonna fakie. Here's the Steve first rock and roll right here. Yeah. Love them. Finger flip. <laughs> Almost beefing, my toe coming off. I'll lay back down and die like a proud man. Skate till we get tired and we can go break dancing with Lester, huh? Maybe. Who? Lester, cut it out now. Let's go skating. Move on, Lester. Jesus. Yeah, let's go. Gotta get with it. Yeah, all right. Breaking's out. to the question, do I have an identity apart from skating? It would definitely be no. I am a skater. I live it. I breathe it. I sleep with it. I dream it. It's every element in my life. Every thought that passes through my brain is skating. It's the best thing. Christian Hasoy, a blue Hawaiian angel on a precarious flight to the top, or just another fly guy in search of Max Headroom, you be the judge. up and your feet just fumble and you're just fumbling and you got butterfingers because you got butterflies and everything's but sometimes when that adrenaline is that big of a rush it helps me skate right like when I'm in contests I think guys 
would more likely stay on in the contest than I would in practicing. Street skating is a lot on just your calf muscle from pumping a lot and your back from jump ramping and your ankles for wall riding. So it's kind of hectic and I take it very serious but because I like street skating, you know. I barely ever vertical ride and I street skate all the time in Venice Beach. What's the danger when you're talking that much height as a one-shot deal? It's not that much of a danger. It's more, well, it's kind of, but then in a way, it's not, because it's easy to bail from high up there. Tony Hawk, perhaps the consummate Southern California kid, with his passion for surfing, video games. Tony, what do we got here? Uh, some 20 by Atari, it's pretty hot. So where are you skating right now? Uh, just like around the city and then I gotta go find a park to skate at. I noticed it says skate or die blinking on the uh... Well, the bees right there, they're gonna get me real soon. That's a swarm of bees? Oh, that's it. And of course, vertical skating. formidable talents and rampaged across the nation to become the winningest skater in vertical competition. I don't know, it seems like uh, there are a lot of kids now that are real competitive with each other, whereas I remember when I was growing up, we would just go out and skate together and we never really tried to, tried to uh, be better than each other, really. So it seems like there's a different attitude now. And everyone's the so-called street skating, which is cool, but it's kind of strange that they finally labeled that. <laughs> Consider the roots of modern skating, the lost and found art of freestyle dating back to the late 50s. Then it was sidewalk surfing, and many of the moves reflected this saltwater influence. Spinners. Head dips. Cutbacks. Coffins. For an update on the thoroughly modern art, there's Pro Freestyle's only choreographed couple, Primo and Diane Desiderio.
And then there's the curious case of Rodney Mullen, the undisputed wonder man who's to skateboard freestyle, what Wayne Gretzky is to ice hockey. Rodney's lightning fast and intricate moves are beyond most skaters' comprehension, placing him on a level beyond the competition. To become the best, you need to uh, just break rules. I mean, you can't, you have to be by yourself. You can't look at others. And so many, like, you get used to looking at another, another like, as an example. And soon you don't know where you're going, you just stop learning how to think. And that's the biggest mistake. As far as like all these guys, they say, okay, I think about skating all day and all night, and I eventually come up with a trick and I play with these little toy skateboards. It's useless. You gotta just, I don't know, it just comes out. You don't know when you're gonna make it up five minutes beforehand. It just come out if it's pure, if it's a good trick. Snowboards. Are they merely skateboards for the snow? Well, for some top pros, that's quite enough. The hardest thing for a skateboarder to adjust to is is the, the length of the board and, and the conditions of the snow. Uh, it's not like once you've skated a ramp, you pretty much have it m memorized in your head what the ramp is like and what, uh, what you can do. Ice, slush, and uh, powder, it's, that's probably one of the hardest things for a skateboarder to adjust to. I'm 21 now. I skateboarded since I was 11 years old till about 16 professionally in the pools, freestyle, some ramp skating, and then I gave that up. I've been snow skiing in between then and now, and just this year I saw the snowboarding and picked that up like it was something that I was born to do. And the ambition that I had, because I loved the, just the sport of it, took me to a first place in the World Cup this year, uh, my, one of my first snowboarding competitions. I'm going to try and get involved and really helping the sport grow. I'd like to see it stay and progress, and I'd like to see all the skateboarders really help the sport stay on that level of an aggressive sport. I don't want to see the skiers turn it into a, a real mellow, uh, cruising, relaxing sport. I mean, it, it, it can have both aspects of it, but I'd like to see it stay real aggressive and, and one of the most cutting-edge sports out there. The street beat is a raging jungle where the natives are always restless, always hungry to devour and or destroy new terrain.
It was happening. Consider the sticker talks, a modern melee of psycho proportions, but just another day at the Institute of Psycho Studies. As most skaters well know, art is what you make it. And here graffiti assumes the level of high art, or at least eye level. Institute, you either have class or you don't. And Gator and friends obviously do. Another twist. Here they sign your shirt rather than your report card. That is, if you make the grade. Once you graduate from the Institute, you may opt to enlist in the Skate Army, or as it is sometimes referred to, the Psycho Platoon. Cement coping is killer. What about pools? Pools are fun too. Army is on the move. They're in the trenches, the concrete ones, putting to proper use the latest in skate weaponry, explosive tactics, and downright aggressive strategies.
Streetscape Wars are over and the last slip shot is fired, a few heroes will be remembered. One of them is Mark Gonzo Gonzalez. The Gons are into his stripes in the rad streets and crazed curbs of Los Angeles. And he continues to terrorize all that confronts him with aggro style, a sort of Barishnikov in combat fatigues. Skate Crusades rage on, gaining new ground, sacred spaces and places, and a legion of super skaters who know exactly what they're for. <laughs> 